who do the whole EDP process in order to be appointed by the creator as general executor. This feels eerily similar to the Roman cult method of putting something between the creator and the created. I read that out because it was a very intelligent question and it was a very intelligent observation. And in fact, it, it is leading towards why we have updated the procedures, why we have moved the remedy from one heaven to the court sites, and it's why we are introducing the concept of the will and the registration of the private will and the notice of it. Uh, but I would say to you uh, that uh, I agree. Uh, we, we shouldn't be simply mimicking a Roman system for the sake of it. Everything we do needs to have a purpose. And you, as the executor of your true trust, uh, do not need to take an oath. It is an absolute right between you and the divine. So there's a few clarifications there, even in the membership registration that needs to be cleared up. And I thank uh, the uh, member that put those questions in and really appreciate it. Let me get to the next live, uh, next live uh, question, Alpha 999, and then we'll come to some of your questions in the chat. Hello, Alpha 999. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can, Frank. How are you doing? Going well. Um, my question is um, about um, going to the public and private thing. Um, and and when you when you uh, would say I'm convening my court of 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 record or convening my court of public record, what's the difference there? Is there a difference by saying it's public and private or or just it is not just saying I'm convening my court of record? Is that not public just by that statement? Um, when you go to a court, the reason okay, the reason that the knowledge of public and private is so confusing is that they most often wish it to be so. Would you agree? They want it to be yeah. confusing? Yes, okay. they do. Yeah. Because it gives them an advantage. Uh, what, uh, what happens is when you go to court, that is a, effectively a private hearing of the private bar guild holding private business. So in, in the case of probate, it's a private surrogate court. It is not a, a, a public court because it has not been nominated by anyone who has standing uh, to be so. And so it, it will not be recorded as a public uh, record of, of, of hearing. It will remain a private, which is why, incidentally, it's always so hard to get a transcript from them of any court proceeding that is not a court of public record. I would say the word public to make it absolutely clear that you are taking it from the private to the public by, uh, by ensuring that it, it, it will be um, uh, considered um, on the public record. I, I would not um, make it an imp implied comment because the risk is that they will simply say, well, that's fine, it's already on the record, you know, Mr. O'Collins, and, and they will keep going, all right? Right. Uh, there's another question I had about um, the minors uh, being um, as members of Eucadia. As a parent, could you um, record them as a, as a member of Eucadia? Because you're the yes. parent. Yes, and, and, and yeah. there, there, there is... I guess the, the, the challenge here is there is uh, a question of... Uh, free will and consent. Under the Roman system, the age of reason is considered the age of seven. That is, from the age of seven, there is a large body of rhetoric within the Roman system, Western law, that argues that a, a, a child by the age of seven can uh, distinguish what is right and what is wrong. Have you heard that before? Yes, uh, I have, seven, yes. But 14 okay. was something too, I mean... There was another thing, yeah, and then of yeah. course, eight, well, it's, age of it. the, the age of con yeah, the, the the ability, the age of right and wrong is from the age of seven, which means that that a, that a, a child can be held to some extent culpable for their actions, but by the age of fourteen uh, is the age of contract, 
and therefore um, by contract, breach of contract or breach then means that they can be uh, punished, yeah, uh, from yes. the age of 40, which is why, you know, juvenile courts and so on uh, starts to be introduced. So the, the, the answer is yes, there needs to be the ability to recognise uh, infants, uh, children, uh, minors as, as members, but it needs to be done with the same care, for example, as one redeeming your departed um, relatives and ancestors out of the Roman system. It's not there yet, and I would be open, and, and when, even when it's done, I would be open for all commentary and criticism to perfect this. But I, I have to say to you, I haven't thought through the nuances yet. I just know it needs to be done very carefully. Uh, I don't mean to ping pong, ping pong from one subject to the next, but there was one other That's one right. that came up this week. Uh, Rob Ryder was talking about um, uh, about a half proof and notaries and whatnot, and uh, doing an oath in front of a notary. Um, there was. Uh, I was just wondering what your take on that was, or if you even know what. Uh, we know that we know that from Henry the Eighth onwards built into the system, a notary is required, the seal of a notary is required to make uh, an instrument, a deed, a, a, an accepted deed by them, not by us, but by them, and, uh, and that a notary is required uh, with a will and testament because, of course, a will and testament is uh, also a deed. Uh, as to putting an oath in front of a notary, accepting all of that, look, I think there's always a risk that we, we get into the situation where we want to click our heels three times and do a twirl and we find a remedy. Yeah. I, I, think we've, I think we've all been down too many rabbit holes for that kind of, of stuff. I think you know, if, it, if it barks like a dog, if it looks like a dog, then, then what? It, it's a dog, yeah? yeah. Um, I, I think this is the case with, with uh, notaries. Uh, they are... Um, through statute, an intrinsic part of the existing system, that's a fact. If you want to do certain things in the Roman system, you need a notary public. I, I, would, I, would, stop, I would stop trying to create hybrids by trying to sort of overstretch their public form with our private. We have private, they have public, they have certain ritual, we have certain ritual, um, there are some cases where we want to roll it into their system, but I don't think there's any benefit in what was being said then. Okay? Okay, thanks a lot, Frank. Uh, I just want to I hope, well, Ray, you get well. Uh, we're all thinking about, about you, I'm sure. Absolutely. Thank you very thanks much. Thanks again. Okay. Yeah, bye. Okay. Uh, before we get to the next uh, questioners, and thanks for those that are holding online to, to speak. I just want to get to a couple of questions in the chat that you've put through. Uh, let me just um, uh, go up here. Uh, uh, guest 53 asked the question, um, would I please interpret my version of the truth movement? Uh, thanks, Guest 53. That's a pretty uh, broad question. Um, the, look, the truth movement, call it the free movement, call it the liberty movement, uh, there is a feature in uh, quote-unquote democracies of there being uh, anti-government or anti, not anti-social, but that's sometimes how it's described, but anti-government uh, or, or pro-freedom uh, protest groups that have been uh, in existence. And those have been in existence from the beginning of the um, Commonwealth in America, right through to the beginning of um, the Magna Carta in, the, in England, right through to the French Revolution. There, there's been uh, groups that have come together and under different philosophies of protest, the Jacobites, Jacobines and so on, all these different groups. Uh, the truth movement is just another version of that, a broad label. And within that, you have a whole diverse array of, of, of opinions. Uh, what I would say about the truth movement, whilst it is a, uh, a potentially fertile area to debate, to discuss, to explore new ideas, uh, it is a sad truth 
well, no pun intended, that since the time of the French Revolution, certain groups, and I include the Jesuits, have used the truth movement as the nursery to rejuvenate the existing world order. Hitler was a member of the truth movement. Stalin was a member of the truth movement. Mussolini was a member of the truth movement. Mao was a member of the truth movement. Castro was a member of the truth movement. And I think this is a sobering point. Robespierre, who murdered thousands of people, was a member of the truth movement of the French Revolution. So we need to be very careful here as to uh, the dangers sometimes of the truth movement um, when it doesn't hold itself to account and uh, the fact that it is used as a tool, unwittingly, I would say, by those, by the existing system. So there's a few comments I'd make about the truth movement. I think uh, it's great. I think uh, it's great that there's debate. I think there's great that there are people waking up. But it's sobering to realise that the system permits it because in many cases it uses it as the fertile ground for rejuvenation of itself. Um, let's see if we can get one more question in on the chat before we go to the next caller. Um, let's see if we've got here another question. Uh, the question is from Swanda. The UCC has not been sent back to me. Would this mean that it needed to have me identify myself as general executor? Uh, Swanda, that's um, a bit hard to answer that uh, without knowing the context of what you sent when you sent it, how you did it, uh, in order to see if, if the UCC filing was recognised as being filed correctly, that's not saying that they validate it, they would normally send you a copy. If you haven't received a copy back, then that would suggest that it hasn't even been recognised as being filed. But if you want more information on that, Swanda, please either put it into the chat or uh, if you can, try and get on the call and let us know. Or go to University of Acadia and uh, provide some more information and uh, we'll answer that question, uh, if not uh, during the week, by next call. Let me go to the next uh, live caller and then we'll keep going through your chats. Please, if you want to speak to us live, press star 8 or hash 8 or put in your question in the chat uh, and I'll get to it. So we'll speak to Dean now. Dean, can you hear us? Uh, yes, Frank. Uh, good day to you all. Uh, How are my, you? my question is about um, essentially the process in which we're going to use to remove ourselves from, let's say, their role from the from that system. Like, for example, many of the questions are about when you're already involved in a controversy with them. Uh, I'm yeah. not involved in any controversies. I, you know, but I'm interested in what steps. Should I be taking to you know, put them on notice and I'm going to be uh, no longer part of their society and be part of a different society? That is an excellent question, Dean. You know that we, we started by the process of the ecclesiastical deed poll um, some months ago now as a means, essentially as a, as a, a respectful means of writing to them telling them what we know about their system and really seeking them to respond and, and uh, remove us. And you know that, that we have not had the, the honour reciprocated by them, okay? okay? So I think the next stage that we want to pursue here is not to repeat something that is not getting the response, but to, to view it from a different angle. You probably heard the saying, the thing that hurts them most is their hip pocket. Have you heard that? Oh, yeah. Hit them, hit them in their pocket. Right. Well, when you are part of a society that has a comprehensive rules of administration, and I mean comprehensive, the criminal code, civil code, energy code, education code, health code, canons, the full nine yards, has registers, is able to administer itself competently, and therefore can with the members' permission issue bonds, 
we can effectively, as 